This video is being sponsored by Educative.io, which has a collection of well-crafted written courses for software developers. Thanks to Educative for arranging a 10% discount for my audience when using the coupon Rachet. More about that later. First, let's start the video. All right. So, hey everyone, this is me, Rachet, and welcome to yet another video. In today's video, we will be talking about the LinkedIn Q&A session. Two weeks back, I had crossed 50,000 followers on LinkedIn. Thank you everyone for the love and support. And in the spirit of celebration, I had mentioned about a Q&A session with my audience. I haven't done much of Q&A sessions and I'm not really sure why. But here it is, the first Q&A session on the channel. So in today's video, we will be talking a lot about how did I prepare myself for interviews? Can people from service-based companies go to Microsoft and Fang and other Google companies? <music> So this took a lot of time. I didn't expect that. And I really appreciate if you can give this a like, share this, and most importantly, subscribe and hit that bell icon. Please do that. And let's begin with the video. Karan asked, hello, Rachid Jain, sir. Please brief us about your company. That is how to apply off campus for tower research and how to prepare for the same. Now, I don't think I should specifically talk about my current company. So let's not complicate things. But in terms of high frequency trading firms, latency is quite important over there. So if you probably have good C++ understanding and background, that would be an easier way to get started with the interview process. Other than that, there is no secret, but you have to go to their careers website or LinkedIn jobs is also quite famous. So you have to search through the jobs in whatever high frequency trading firm you want. You have to see what they are looking for. Does your background, like does your skills match that? And if you feel that you make a strong case, you should probably go for it. But the interviews generally talk about uh, data structures, algorithms, problem solving, but also on operating system concepts as well. Generally, the questions over there not only talk about data structures, algorithms, problem solving, but they also generally focus upon operating systems or probably network questions like what is the difference between a TCP and UDB network? or what are multicasts. So things like that, I would say if you are specifically targeting HFT firms, probably it's a good idea to invest in OS networking as well as data structures and algorithms. But again, DS algo are like really important. So that should be priority one, followed by OS and then followed by networks. Hope that helps. So Puneet Chetty says, congrats, sir. I just want to know how did you prepare yourself for the interviews and how we can get our dreams of exactly as you dreamt of, not the usual YouTube advice. All right, Puneet, so in my case, I had given multiple interviews, but I was never doing any focused preparation for them, except when I was in college and I bagged the offer from Microsoft. That was the only time when I was really brushing up my skills. Other than that, in my case, the data structure and algorithm skills were really powerful for me because of the time that I devoted during college time. And then once I was in Microsoft, Microsoft really helped me during the interviews, like talking about like how to have effective communications, how to speak clearly, how to share your ideas with clarity, and then how to be a team player. So Microsoft gave me those values. And then the work I did over there allowed me to have interesting stories to talk about when I was giving interviews. So I didn't do any focus preparation after joining Microsoft. It's been like really casual. And one of the reasons for that is because I was always making videos for you guys, tutorials, how dynamic programming works, how graph algorithms work. So I've been doing all this kind of stuff for over two, three years now. And because of that, my skills are like really brushed up and I don't need any focus preparation. Hope that answers the first part. And talking about the dream job, I, I don't think like first you have to identify what your dream job is. I have seen that as you evolve, like probably once you have or two or three years of experience, that's a good time when you would really know what your dream job looks like. So that will kind of keep on changing. So the question actually becomes like, how can you really be so interesting that people want to hire you? And that's simple, like you need to build your skills. That's the only tip I give everyone. Invest in your skills a lot because that's the only thing that will give you the wings to fly and live your life the way you want. Debya Jyoti asked that how to solve Codeforces diff to ABCD really fast. So Codeforces is a competitive programming website and it helps contests which vary in the duration of two hours or two and a half hours. And in that you have to solve around five problems. Easiest problem is A followed by B, C, D, E, F, G. And it, it really depends how long the contest is. Depending on that, you have four, five, six problems. To solve first four problems like diff to A, B, C, D, and I'm talking from the perspective of 2017 and 2018, when I was a really active competitive programmer, I realized that there is no magic other than practice to it. Like I have seen beginners are really searching from grandmasters and like the red coders that they will give like there's some secret website or some re secret resource which allows you to like have some wings and give that power of solving things fast. 
it's simple practice like you have to develop the ability to write bugless code as well as the ability to quickly convert your thoughts into code so these are the two things which you should really focus upon and a simple way to do that is can the last 10 code forces problems try to solve all a b c d as soon as possible keep on doing that maintain a timer do virtual contest and that's it if you keep on doing this for a while i'm sure that you will see improvement now jay shukla asks how to get from service based company to product based having one year of experience i know that a lot of people who go to service based companies probably have this dream of like going into fang and looking like that's a dream job for them i can understand like the enthusiasm that you possess towards let's say google or microsoft it's quite it's it might be quite huge and so if you have one year of experience and you want to switch from service based companies to let's say microsoft or google or amazon so what you want is a good resume and you want to do really good at your current firm try to understand whatever the business is doing why you are doing that i don't think that if it's a service based company then there is no learning opportunity in all situations since we really do not know a lot of things you still have the opportunity to learn some things so invest your time like really well and learn and extract as much as you can from your current situation once you have that like have a really good interesting resume which is easy to scan and it really talks about what skills you have if you have a good resume then you can start searching for jobs on linkedin or probably go to careers.microsoft.com or careers.google.com and start applying you have to read jd you have to read which jobs really match your skills and if you're confident that you can do really well for this job you should definitely apply for it the worst thing which is stopping you from getting into fan companies is you not applying enough times to these companies it's quite common that if you apply for the first time or the second time you probably don't get selected and it's quite common it's quite common in firms like google amazon and microsoft that a lot of people who apply are rejected in their first or second tries and they finally get the job after in their third attempt or probably second attempt what i want to say is do more of interviews not just in your dream companies but other companies as well because they will help you establish where you are weak at what are your weak spots are you not able to communicate clearly is it your communication or you're not able to answer the behavioral questions clearly like tell me about yourself why do you really want to leave your current firm and all those questions so try to identify your weak spots doing more and more of interviews is a good way to establish and evaluate what your strong suit is and what your weak spots are and then you certainly have to work on your weak spots so invest your time in that do more of interviews see why you fail and work on the weak spots and keep doing that and probably sure that it won't take more than a year that you finally get your job in your dream company maybe in the covid situations things are really difficult i would also recommend you to take referrals in case you feel that applying on careers portal is not doing any good so to make progress probably it's a good idea to find some network probably on your linkedin network or in your friend circle who already works at google or amazon and then ask them about would they be interested in a referral but have a clear resume and do a lot of projects that actually talk about your skill don't let your words communicate about your skill let your work communicate about what you know and what you don't now rayan bashir maheen asked to get an interview call at tech giants like Pang and etc., what is the role of different online judges rating? It's a good thing if you are a candidate master or you are orange coder or red coder on code forces or six star coder or seven star coder at code chef. So if you are really doing good at competitive programming websites, they do talk about your expertise in data structure and algorithm skills and probably it's a good idea to mention them in your resume. It's a good way to say that I'm really good at data structures and algorithms, but other than that, it's not doing anything else. Performance in interviews matters a lot. So don't think about that. If you are a red coder, you will definitely get that job. You might be really good at competitive programming, but if you fail to communicate in those 45 minutes, you're not going to get that job. It really does not change anything else. You still have to give your interviews. You still have to perform really well in that. And it's not the case that if some company is looking for two years of experience in Python and you have a six star rating at CodeChef, they will be like, no, we need to interview this guy. It only helps up to a certain point. And it's just a power that you give to your resume to let it speak about your data structures and algorithm skills. Gaurav Rastogi asked, how can I improve my problem solving and logical thinking skills? And also please tell where to learn maths for CP. So Gaurav, I have already captured how to get started with your math skills and all the important concepts like dynamic programming or permutations, combinations, probability, how you can really build a good understanding about that. Project Euler is a good website and you can check out the video. I will put that in the description if you really want to deep dive into it. But Project Euler is a fun website and it's a really good way to improve your math skills. Now, there is no shortcut for problem solving or logical thinking skills. But having said that, I have seen that people who were really good at math they tend to really pick up really well in when you're talking about problem solving because I don't know how it works, but math gives you that 
ability to think analytically and make progress when you're stuck. It makes you a good problem solver. And I, I do feel that it also depends on your childhood activities. Like I was always, as even as a child, I was a math lover and I used to do all kinds of puzzles and train teachers. Probably that helped me. Like I, I'm always curious when it comes to math, like how things are working. And I'm always ready to spend time and deep dive into it and correlate at the end, like what I have learned from it. And can I relate it to the problems that I've solved in the past and all those kind of things. So doing these activities, like taking things slowly and doing them with fun, is a, is a really good way to develop good problem solving skills. Do more of project Euler again and strengthen your math concepts and do like more of brain teasers. Even that is fun and it gets you like, you know, that addiction comes in which you are doing more and more of such problems and you kind of understand like there are some patterns and how you should approach problems when you're totally stuck. And even 3B1B is a good channel which you should follow and he has already made a video about problem solving and analytical skills. So I'll put that in video description. Make sure to check that out as well. Great content over there. All right, let's move to the next one. Now, Nijhari Jankar has asked, can I get a call from Microsoft being from a tier three college and six years of experience in companies which do not belong to FANG? All right, I probably have talked about this a lot, but again, it really does not matter from which college you are. If you have experience, what the firm really cares about is what have you done in those firms? How fast you got promoted in your current firm? What is the impact or value that you're bringing out to your current firm? And what are your learnings in your current firm? They're looking for signals which you have to give via your resume. And I understand that there might be some skills that you have developed by doing certain activities like doing some courses and then doing some projects. Make sure to also have that GitHub link as well as a demo link for whatever app you have built on your own if you are including that particular tech stack or language in your resume. If you are working in startups for six years, I'm definitely sure that you have so many skills that FANG engineers might not have. And this is true because you will be working on so many things across different tech stacks. You would be having so much of knowledge that I would definitely ask you to have confidence in yourself and start doing the interviews. I am saying that a lot of you guys are not able to get into FANG because you're not trying. I've seen that people just procrastinate interviews like they might not be able to crack Microsoft interviews, like they really do not know what Google asked. The point is what is stopping you from applying to those companies? Get a referral if you have a LinkedIn network or if you have friends working at those companies where you want to work. Get a referral, get started with the interview process, ask them what the interviews might sound like, get the help of recruiter, try to prepare yourself. There is so much of content out there these days, even for preparing for data structures and algorithms. You will find super useful if you are preparing for interviews. Like this playlist talks about animated solutions like super clarity. We also talk about code walkthroughs and how you should approach. And these are tricky questions that you should definitely solve. If you talk about dynamic programming, I am sure I have a playlist for that. If you talk about graph theory, this is a wonderful video to get started with like what are graphs, how to store them in memory, DFS and DFS traversals, everything is covered in detail. If, even if you talk about C++ STL, I have wonderful content, like really long videos, but they cover everything that you would need to know from beginning. In fact, I also share my personal interview experiences with like famous brands, Uber, Goldman Sachs, everything like, like how my interview process began, what were the kind of questions asked and like, did I get the offer? What did I learn if I didn't get the offer and all those things. So make sure if you are preparing for interviews, you should definitely explore the channel and extract as much value as possible. Like let's get started with the journey. And as I have said so many times, when you are giving interviews, you might not be able to succeed in the first go. And that's exactly what we are looking forward to. Like we want to figure out what are our weak spots and doing interviews is a good way to prepare. Like, let's say if you want to be in Microsoft after one year, you can start with applying to different companies like probably Uber, Zomato, CureFit. There are so many companies. Like, let's start with the interview process. There are so many companies. Give more of interviews. You will see what's going on in the market. What are the current interview standards look like? What are the kind of questions they ask? And at that point of time, if you fail, try to figure out why you failed, what are your weak spots and work on that. So once you are comfortable, apply to Microsoft or Google or whatever your dream company is, you might be able to succeed. If not, it's fine. You can you can apply again within six months. All right. So try to understand what is the reason that these companies are not hiring you. Probably it might happen that you're not getting shortlisted. So it's an indicator that your resume is not like properly articulated or it might not be that impressive. You might not be from good college. So you have to cover that up by showing your skills. Like, do you really have a good GitHub profile? If yes, then throw that in your resume and be impressive and get the attention of recruiters. So start applying and see how things turn out for you. Like, like do not wait for something to come into your life and that will change. You have to take actions and change your life. That's, that's the best tip that I can give for this question. Having said that, I have so many of my relatives, friends, 
who have been from tier 3 colleges who have five or six years of experience working in startups and now they are joining like senior software developers at google and microsoft so do not be discouraged because microsoft google facebook they really do not care about what your college is what your company is if you have a good resume and if you nail the interviews you will get the proper designation that you deserve with your skills so i hope i have covered a lot of questions and this video was fun and helpful now i do like educative unlimited because it allows you to buy all courses at one single time and you don't have to purchase or buy for each and individual course as you can see for india they already are very generous and running a 40 percent off campaign but for my audience we have an additional 10 percent off for limited sales on using the coupon rachat so make sure to go to educative.io slash rachat to enjoy a discount I might have missed a few questions and I really apologize for that. I also am not able to respond to a lot of LinkedIn messages. I am sorry for that. I don't mean to be rude, but sometimes it quite happens that you have so much shortage of time that you are giving up so many of your personal things that it's really difficult to communicate with everyone. And that's one of the reasons why I run a YouTube channel. So guys, this channel has been extensively talking about data structures, algorithms, coding interviews, even sharing my own coding interview experiences with you guys. So if this is something which interests you or you're passionate about, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and most importantly, hit the bell icon. It really means a lot. So that's pretty much about it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding. Till then, bye-bye.